Welcome to part one of a six part mini series. I was struggling for a title and so I've titled it How to Be a Happy Landlord. And uh, I, 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 spent, I spent quite a bit of time thinking about that. And um, what made me decide was I used to be a miserable landlord. I'm not now, I'm like the proverbial pig. Um, but genuinely, I, I used to, you know, very little joy in the business of landlording, very little profit, honestly, and a load of stress. Um, I got to this point by making lots of mistakes, refusing to give up, you know, bit of tenacity, gets you a long way. Uh, I'd love to be able to guide you through to my happy place. Um, six part mini series because there's six management focuses. I want to run through them all one at a time. By the time we got there, I want you to have more money in your bank account, uh, have more time to spend that money, and less stress, less hassle, doing it easily. You know, if things are, um, if things are hard, then there's something wrong. And um, I'm not saying you know, don't work hard, you know, things take effort, all of those things are true. But if something just seems like you can't quite get over the top of it, it's not quite working, then generally there's something that's going wrong that, and, and it's a matter of you know, fixing those problems. Don't forget, hassle stress comes from um, un things, unpre unpredicted things happening, you know, um, unexpected things happening. And in particular, not knowing what to do about those things. Um, so yeah, six, six uh, management processes, uh, they're split equally. There's three before a tenant moves in, three things you have to think about. We call them the three lines of defense before a tenant moves into the property. And then once a tenant's moved in, you've got no more defense, it's the three focuses thereafter. So six in total. Um, this video, first in the mini series, is about the first line of defense. If you want all of the videos in your inbox, don't forget to subscribe. Give us a thumbs up right now if you're liking this. It helps that YouTube algorithm. Thank you very much. Um, and if you've got any questions throughout, either now um, or throughout the, uh, the rest of the series, click on the video description. There's a link in there, um, discovery at forthelandlords.com, that email address there, and uh, book your place on a discovery call. A discovery call is quite an intimate thing. There's usually um, you know, 10, a dozen people on there. So it's intimate enough to uh, get your questions answered, but not so intimidating and no obligation anyway. But you know, it's not like it's a one-to-one -one or anything. So it's the right, the right size group. Book on that, it's free. You know, I'll be on the call. There's a couple of members of the team on, and depending on which day, who will be there. But they'll run you through what's, what's possible, how we do things, and get, most importantly, it's a two-way thing, is that you can get your, answer, you know, your questions answered. So book on that. Uh, on that discovery call. So what is the first line of defense? The first line of defense is you, me, every landlord. Um, more specifically, it's about you being, me being, we, um, being a good landlord and having a decent and safe home to rent. And you remember that, decent and safe home to rent. I'll come on to that a little bit later. We'll talk a bit about you first, but it stands to reason that you, a decent landlord, have a decent and safe home. So talk about you. Um, there's an unfortunate tendency uh, among, amongst landlords, probably other walks, you know, lots of walks of life, you know, not just landlords, um, but it's landlords what we're looking at, isn't it? Unfortunate, unfortunate tendency to cut corners. And uh, I, I now appreciate that, that that could jar with you right now. You know, I, I'm, I'm only, what, three, three and a half minutes in and I'm already blaming you. Um, I'm not. Yeah, if a tenant doesn't pay their rent, that's down to them, of course. But what I know is it, it, it's, their, it, it's um, their fault, but it is your problem. And let's try and do something about alleviating the problem, reducing the current the amount of times it occurs. Let me level with you too. Um, I know this for a fact because I have this tendency to cut corners too. I think most people do, don't they? It, it, there's, there's a couple of different reasons why. Um, Maybe it's because you want to save some cost. Maybe it's because you haven't got the time to, to do that, the thing, to do the right job. Um, maybe, and this is surprisingly often, because you don't know what the right job is. Um, you don't realize you're cutting a corner. But let me make it absolutely clear, I'm no different to you. Um, I meet you dozens of times a month. You know, we sit down with landlords, and our landlords, no matter what shape or size they come in, they're all, there's something that runs through the middle of them and I've got that too. And uh, I, I, this is predictable, so I know I can fix this. Um, so, so listen up. 
I sympathise. This was me cutting corners. If you do that consistently, you get this you know, negative spiral, this whirlpool that pulls you down and you can't seem to see a, a way out of it. When one thing goes wrong, multiple things go wrong and it's just really hard to climb out over the top. Problems seem unsurmountable. It almost feels like there's, there's not quite enough money there, um, not, not, not quite enough time to fix everything. You don't quite know how to do things. This is sort of frustration, lack, lack of knowledge. Most landlords I meet identify with that in some way. Um, it just never seems you know, very, very profitable for lots of them. It's like, it just doesn't quite make sense. And, and the question I get is, well, why are you so enthusiastic about this? Why are you so happy? Uh, and the difference is just a small amount, but every bit of that small amount all drops to the bottom line. It's where all the fun is. So in my life as a landlord, I was, I've had some pretty dark days, I'll be honest. Um, I've had some heart attack inducing, you know, when you get that adrenaline coming in, it's like, oh my God, how are we gonna deal with this? I've had all of that. So I'd really like to help you uh, avoid some of those. Um, right now in my life as a landlord, I don't, I don't have any surprises. Um, I can run my property portfolio from a beach. Clearly I don't do it very often, but I can and I have, you know, two, three weeks off, I'm, I'm, everything runs absolutely smoothly. I love doing what I'm doing at the moment and I keep coming back to work because we love doing it. But um, yeah, having a property portfolio that you don't have to do that, it's really nice to know you've got that that to, as, a, as an option. Um, like I say, I'm not sat here smug, I made all those mistakes. I know why you make the decisions you make um, and I'm calling them cutting corners and that's a bit harsh maybe um, because I know you're not a rogue landlord, but make no mistake, if the newspapers wrote an article about you, that's what they call you. Um, you make these decisions because you don't know what the alternative is. I have the hope I've got the alternative. So here it is. Um, you are going to surprise yourself when you, when you start to do things right, uh, do things well rather than cutting corners, you're actually going to make more money. You're going to save time. You're going to have that certainty as well. So it might take you a few months to get to that situation, but yeah, all the more reasons to start now. Um, right. So first line of defense is you having the right attitude. Um, if you think that is a load of, you know, softy namby pamby nonsense um and i understand why you might you know i've, I've been speaking for, for about seven eight nine minutes now and what actually concrete have i given you um i just waffled on about some idea nothing really some, nothing you can actually implement so let me put it in some terms that might make sense a real life example i've written a, a few little bits down here to sort of jog my memory but this is a true story um we bought uh, about 30 odd houses from one landlord uh, about six, seven, eight, oh God, time's going on about eight years ago now. Um, and there's two, out of all of those houses, we, I already owned houses in plenty of the streets where we were buying houses off this other landlord. And um, it was just interesting because this landlord was selling up because it wasn't working for him. And you could, you could see it, meeting the guy, um, well, first of all, he had the wrong attitude. I'll tell you that for now. That's kind of the, the punchline to the story, but he had the wrong attitude. And you could almost see that from the moment you met the guy stepping wearily out of his van. You know, he didn't drive a car. Uh, he had a van because he was doing all the work himself. He worked hard, no question. He worked hard, something to admire for sure. Um, he did everything himself. Uh, he did the viewings, he wrote the contracts, he collected the rent in cash sometimes. Uh, he fixed the boilers. You really shouldn't be fixing the boilers if you're not gas registered. But you know, he would fix the boilers. You know, that, that's um, commendable that he's there you know, four o'clock on a Sunday afternoon fixing the boiler, but not very commendable if you're looking at it from the, you know, here's a rogue landlord. That's what we'll get written in the newspaper, you know. Uh, he decorates everything himself. You get the picture, yeah? He always had maintenance problems. He always had arrears. Um, he was all stressed, he was moaning, he was miserable. Honestly, the, the guy just looked tired as a dog and a face that just said, I'm not very happy with this. Uh, be clear, he was a multimillionaire, you know. Um, he had everything going to him. He had everything ready right in front of him that, that he, it could have worked. So he didn't trust or even like his tenants. That was very clear. Um, his houses were in a poor state of repair. He'd even taken to renting the houses out without carpets blame the government for that because they didn't allow him to take enough deposit to trust the tenants with the carpets. That was the actual words that he used, you know. Um, so he blamed other people. Now, we had many houses on the same streets. And the thing that was clear to me was, I didn't have any of these problems. Mine were all fine. Um, he sold up, we bought these houses. And guess what? 
in six months time after we'd renovated the houses, got them into tip top condition, basically like mine were um, already, put decent tenants in them, got less maintenance problems, less voids, everything just became happy. And the, re the reason I'm telling this story in particular, I'm picking on this particular chap, poor chap, maybe he's watching, maybe, maybe, maybe you'll clearly know if it's you. Um, he went and bought somewhere else. He repurposed that money to what he described as a nicer area. And guess what? Had all the same problems because it was all in his head. Um, if he'd have just committed to do things right to start off with, he wouldn't have had any of those problems. It was nothing to do with, he, he called it a bad area. Rubbish. We, there's no such thing. You know, there are, this is not true, there are definitely some bad areas. This was not a bad area. We had plenty of houses performing just well. It wasn't, you know, de definitely he moved up a stage, you know, the up, up a step, up the ladder, but uh, I've already made plenty of comments saying, I think the money's to be made in the in the sort of, if, if one and one to 10, one's the Bronx, 10's a mil, you know, millionaire's row, I think the money's to be made in threes and fours. And he went up to a, a seven no yield up there whatsoever um, but he had the same problems he had tenants that would cause causing the problems um why um if you are a landlord with the right attitude it follows that you have a decent and safe home you have the right home if you've got the right home you deserve to have the right tenant. Now, not necessarily saying you're gonna get them, that's that's part two of this mini series, but you, at least you deserve them, you've got a fighting chance. You won't even get to have that tenant unless you've got the right attitude, unless you've got the right house. So long as you keep that attitude and that mindset, you'll maintain the house and you'll maintain it, everything in such a way, not just the, the fabric of the building, but the tenancy um, agreement, the, uh, the paperwork, um, keep on top of the, uh, the accounts and the arrears, and, and keeping on top of things is the right word. You'll, you'll have things working uh, at a level and then staying at a level. Um, you keep the right tenant, they'll have less maintenance issues, they'll be more engaged with you and sort more things out for you, with you. Um, they'll pay their rent, you'll have less voids, you'll have, you'll have less hassle. At the end of the month, at the end of the year, financial year, you'll have more money in your bank account. It's a fact. I've tried it both ways. It's a fact. A well-managed, well-engaged, property portfolio, a landlord with, with, a, with a property portfolio running the same way, makes more money every year, every year. So hopefully you can see that only a good landlord deserves or even have the option of choosing that good tenant. Um, a decent and safe home is the solid foundation that all property portfolios are built on. So I'll try it both ways. It really does work this way. So the next video is all gonna, gonna be all about the second line of defense and that's choosing the right tenant. Um, it's not as complicated as it sounds, there's some golden rules, um, we're going to run through those in, uh, in video number two. I hope you've liked this, if you did, please uh, like it, um, give us a thumbs up. If you want notifying as soon as part two is released, subscribe now. And if you're interested to hear more about how our team can help you know, manage your property portfolio, um, you've found a, a different type of letting agency here, click in the description discovery at forthelandlords.com book yourself onto a discovery call and we can run through how we can help you um hope that was uh, that was useful i'll see you for part number two